Hey guys, this botany project is going to be about the plant Nepeta cataria, otherwise known as catnip. The main question being asked today is how can catnip be used to benefit people and their cats? Catnip is a perennial herb, perennial meaning that a plant lives for two or more years. It has many medicinal values and it also is edible. Catnip is native to the drier regions of Eastern Europe, Asia, and the Himalayas. It was brought to North America by early settlers and has established itself in Canada and the U.S. since then. The ideal conditions for growing catnip is dry soils with slightly acidic pH in areas exposed to full sunlight, mild temperatures, and catnip has been grown since ancient times because of its medicinal value, and the Greeks and Romans grew catnip because their cats loved it. In the Nepeta genus, there are over 250 species of flowering plants, which are part of the Lamiaceae family. The Lamiaceae family is also referred to as the mint family. Between the plants of the Nepeta genus, there are significant genotypic differences determined at the level of microsatellite DNA sequences and varying morphology. These morphological differences include stem height, leaf size, and essential oils found in the plant. Due to the many differences between plants of the Nepeta genus, it can be concluded that relatives of catnip won't have the same medicinal value. As well, catnip is related to oregano, spearmint, and basil. Here is the phylogenetic tree of Nepeta species, showing their relationships to each other. At a macroscopic level, catnip has a stem, leaves, and small flowers. The flowers are small purple spotted, white or lavender, tubular flowers. These flowers form clusters at the end of floral branches at the top of the plant. They are bilabiate, meaning they have two lips, and they have four stamen, where two are long and two are short. The calyx forms a protective layer over the flower and has five sepals or leaf-like petals. The flower has male and female parts, therefore it's a hermaphrodite. They bloom between July and November. And here is an up-close picture showing the structure of the flower. The leaves are about 8 centimeters long, ovulate shape, meaning that it's broad at the base and tapered at the end. They also have serrated edges, and the color of the leaves vary from pale green to gray green. Microscopically, there's the epidermis, stomata, two different layers of mesophyll, and conchyma. The epidermis is the outermost layer of cells and has stomata, which allow for gas exchange. Inside the leaf, there is the mesophyll, which is made up of the spongy parenchyma and palisade. And this is the photosynthetic tissue of the plant. Lastly, the conchyma strengthens the cell wall and is present in the upper and lower leaf surfaces. The stem is rectangular with projected corners and is hollow. The xylem is a continuous ring throughout the stem. This vascular tissue allows the transportation of water and dissolved nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant. The phloem is found beneath the pericycle. The phloem transports sugars and other metabolic pro products from the photosynthetic leaves to the rest of the plant. During peak condition, the stem will grow to three feet high. And here's a diagram of the phloem and the xylem. The active component that stimulates the brains of both humans and cats is the chemical called nepetalactone. Throughout the plant, there are microscopic bulbs called trichromes the trichromes store nepetalactone oil until maturity. 
when the trichomes burst and nepetalactone is released. The highest concentration of nepetalactone is found in seed pods. Beta nepetalactone is the main component of catnip at the full flowering stage at 55.03%. Alpha nepetalactone is second with 31.2%. Alpha penine is third with 4.6%, penine being a component with antimicrobial activities. Here's a table showing all the components of catnip in its different stages. And here's a depiction of the molecule nepetalactone. Catnip is a good plant to grow in gardens because it repels various cabbage pests, aphids, flea beetles, squash bugs, and ants from the surrounding plants. As well, they bring pollinators to the area. It also deters mice and rats, possibly because catnip attracts cats to the area. Additionally, there is evidence that catnip can help prevent animals from catching fleas because of a compound named iridodial, which can be extracted from catnip. Aridodial has been found to attract an insect known as lacewig. This insect eats aphids and mites. A hazard of catnip, if ingested, is its diuretic properties that can affect the frequency of urination. If it is smoked, it can result in visual hallucinations and euphoria similar to that of LSD and marijuana. It can also cause a sedative effect in humans. If boiled, it can often result in headaches. There is a lack of research into the risks of using catnip, which is the reason for it not being a highly utilized plant. Catnip has over 2,000 medical uses. It is a great diaphoretic, meaning that it is a drug that causes perspiration. This allows for fevers to be broken, therefore it's a good treatment for colds and flus. It is also a good remedy for bronchial congestion and digestive troubles. Catnip has calming and relaxing properties. This helps with relieving tension-associated headaches and relaxing the digestive system to help with obstructions in the column. It can also be used to relieve cramping during the menstrual cycle and also regulate this cycle. Catnip is consumed most commonly by creating a tea with its leaves. It can also be mixed with other foods to create salads, stews, and soups. Catnip also has magical uses as well. It can be used for love spells and spells of friendship, and often is found in mojo bags, an African-American hoodoo custom, and it is also grown in gardens for good luck. Catnip is also effective at deterring black flies and mosquitoes in particular. This repellent property is due to the presence of a nepetalactone, Nepetalactone has the mosquito repellency 10 times that of DEET. Insecticides used for commercial agriculture typically have 5 to 10 percent DEET in them, and research suggests that the amount of nepetalactone required to get the same repellency as DEET would be far less. When cats are exposed to catnip, they roll in it, chew on it, kick in it, flipping it, and other odd behaviors. In this video, dried catnip was placed on a paper towel, and this kitten was just doing these exact odd behaviors with it. And this reaction often lasts five to 10 minutes until they lose interest. This is due to the release of nepetalactone when the cat chews on the catnip. The cat's olfactory gland detects the chemical, and this results in a euphoric high. Catnip could potentially be used to train or prevent behavior problems in young cats. As well, the reaction to catnip is inherited as an autosomal gene and only affects around 50% of cats.
So in conclusion, catnip is useful for people medicinally because of its relaxing and diaphoretic properties. It is also useful to people for repelling insects in agriculture and for personal use. As well, catnip helps cats relax and gives them euphoria. As well, catnip could possibly be used to help with training cats with behavioral problems. So one outstanding question could be why hasn't DEET been replaced by catnip derivatives as an insect repellent in agriculture to make it more environmentally friendly? Some possible answers are there hasn't been enough research to give farmers confidence in the effectiveness of catnip insect repellent products. And also DEET products are less expensive, approximately one third the price of catnip insect insecticide repellents. And also DEET products are more widely available. That concludes our presentation, so if anyone has any comments or questions, then now is the time to ask, and hopefully you guys enjoyed learning about catnip.